Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today we're going to spend a little time simplifying OpenTX. What I really want to spend some time on is the information flow basics for OpenTX because this is another question that I see all the time. Now the way we're going to do that is I'm going to simplify our lives. I'm going to clear all under inputs, mixes is empty, and outputs is empty. So right now I've got basically a blank slate. I'm going to show you what happens with information as it flows through an OpenTX radio. Inputs, mixes, and outputs. That's all we're focused on today and we're focused on a very simple configuration so you can start to understand how the connection works between your thumb, the stick, the radio, and the plane. Okay, that's what we're trying to establish here is that basic information flow. And it all starts with inputs. So you gotta think of inputs as things like this control stick. Okay, this control stick is an input. This potentiometer is an input. This switch is an input. This slider is an input. Every mechanical thing on the radio that is meant to operate the plane is an input. On the inputs tab, what we're trying to do is define and connect the inputs to a name that we can use throughout the radio. Now, traditionally, the rudder in my models goes on channel three. So I'm gonna use that as the example. I'm gonna double click on I3, which is input number three. By the way, you get 32 inputs and 64 lines on OpenTX. So that's input number 32. And you will actually see that on the input screen right in here. It'll show you how many inputs you've used out of how many you have available. Okay, so we've got 32 inputs that we can use. I'm gonna start with input number three because that's where I normally put my rudder. Now when I double click that, I'm just gonna call it rudder because I can remember that. The line name is just decorative and it's only used on the input screen. So you can name it whatever you want. Okay, notice in the source list at the very top are the primary controls that we use for our airplanes. In, my, in this case, the source that I wanna use, and when I say source, I'm referring to the input source. This thing, that's the rudder. That's the rudder stick. If you're in mode one, that would be the aileron, okay? But in mode two, where I fly, that's the rudder. So the source, the input is the rudder. Okay, now let's look and see how that manifests itself on the input screen. We've got now an input number three is defined as the rudder, and it's got a weight of 100, and it's got a line name called rudder. Okay, now what we have to do is take that input, notice in our mixer tab that there's nothing here. If I were to try and fly my plane right now, I would get zero rudder movement because we haven't assigned that input to a channel. What the channel means is that's a pin on the receiver. In my case, because I normally put my rudder on channel three, in FR Sky receivers, it, it doesn't care. I, I can put, let's make the argument. I'm gonna put my rudder on channel one. On channel one, I'm gonna call that my rudder. And for my source, here's the important part. You wanna connect this to the input that we defined. So you see this I3 rudder? That's line three on the input screen. So the input screen, line three, rudder. That's my input. So when I click on that and hit OK, I should put a name on this. Oh, I have a name on it. It's right there. What I've done is created a mix that connects the input, my stick right here, to channel one on my receiver. Let's take a look at what that looks like in the simulator. My input is over here on the left. It's my rudder. And remember, that is going... Now, you're not going to see that on the input screen because the input screen refers to the stick. This is the stick, so I can see right here and right here if I'm at my full movement of input on the input device. So I'm going to move my rudder all the way over to the side, and you can see over here my mixer received 100% on channel 1 because that's the channel I put the rudder on. And my output, the channel output, is also 100 because that's what the mixer said to deliver was 100% of throw. Okay, so the idea here, guys, is that the flow of information goes from input, where you define the mechanical thing that we're operating, and then we're telling the mixer, hey, if you get input on this physical interface, connect it to channel one. And then on the output, you can put a name in here to help you keep it straight. 
and you can decide if you you want to adjust the output movement of the servo and the direction of the servo so if the direction is wrong the output screen is where you invert it all right so uh, let's take a look at that real quick i'm going to hit the simulator and when i move the rudder stick notice when i go left we see negative let me hold the value here when i go left you see negative 100 on the channel negative 100 on the mix when i go left okay if you want to reverse that you come into your output screen and under direction you invert it and then when I move that rudder to the left, I get positive 100. You see, positive 100. That's how you reverse servo direction on OpenTX. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about weights and how weights are managed in OpenTX. So on the input screen, this is where you're generally gonna set up your dual rates. It's convention, I suppose you can do it in mixes if you want, but conventional configurations have the inputs set up dual rates. So in this case, I'm going to say that my high rates, um, and there's lots of different ways you can do this, but just for argument's sake, I'm going to say my high rates are going to be SB down. Okay? So that, and, oh, let's put an expo in here too. Let's put an expo in here of 70. Let's pretend it's a 3D plane. So I've got a weight of 100. I've got expo of 70 when my SB switch is down. Now I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to say when the switch is not SB down, which means if SB is in any other position but down, I want my weight to be, say, 60, and I want my expo to be 20. So let's see how that manifests itself in the mixer. In fact, you know what? Just because I want to show you, let's reduce this weight from 100. Let's make it 95. That way we can see for sure that there's a difference. So I'm going to click Simulator. I'm going to lock my throttle stick. We're going to look at the outputs and I'm going to move my rudder. And notice my SB switch is down, so that means high rates. And you can see over here on the outputs, I've got 95, 95. Now, when I switch this SB switch to anything but down, notice that my rates drop to 60 and 60. So 60 on the mixer and 60 on the channel. Now, you see how those are paired, right? On high rates, we see 95 travel, 95% travel. We flip to any other position, we see 60. Okay, does that make sense? All right, now let's go back in and, and look at one more thing. So the inputs tell the mix what the travel is going to be. So it starts with the inputs. Now you can go into the mix and change it again. So we start with an input of, say, 95. And let's go into the mix and reduce that by half. Let's call it 50. Now we'll simulate it and we'll run this. Now if I move that rudder and I'm on high rates, which should be 95 on the input, look what happens on the mix and on the output. So the mixer, because I put a weight of one half, it reduced the throw in the mix by half. And it also correspondingly reduced the channel output by half. So flow of input, we started issuing 95% travel to the mixer, but then we in the mixer we said, let's just use 50% of what we received from the input. And that's what happens. And you can further reduce that in the outputs by reducing it again. You can say instead of negative 100, I want it to be 50%, and instead of 100, I want it to be 50%. So now if we simulate that, we should see half of 47 on full deflection for the rudder. So let's go all the way over, and there we go, 48. Now look, the mix still says 47. Notice that, because we didn't change the mix. The mix still says 47, but the channel says 24. And the reason for that is because the output, before it sends the pulses to the receiver, reduced what it received from the mixer by half, and now it's 24%. Okay, that's today's topic. I really just wanted to spend some time showing you what the flow of information was from the stick, when you touch the stick, through the radio. You go from the input on the stick, through your mix, and then through to output. 
you might sit there and say, well, John, what are the scenarios where I'd use 50% here and 50% there? I never have. I never have. In every setup I've ever done, I leave my outputs alone. My mixes, now there are times in the mix where I'll make adjustments. If I'm going to do something like flapperon mixing or spoilerons or delta or VTAIL, in those cases you would change the values because in those cases you always want both control surfaces, for example, to be 50% of whatever the input is. Otherwise you overextend the servo and that's bad. So in those cases, that's where a mix value of lower than 100 makes sense. But for a straight up airplane, all I've ever done is use the input screen and I use the weights and, and expo in the input screen and assign those to a switch so that I can have dual or triple rates. And that's it. Just to recap, it all starts with your thumb your thumb touches a mechanical switch on your radio and that is defined on your input screen. The input screen feeds that output to the mixer. Any changes you make in the mixer are then fed to the output on the specific channel and you can control your servo direction in the output screen. The main function of the input screen is to define what your inputs are and apply rules to those inputs and then feed data from the input or from your thumb into the mixer. The main function of the mixer channel is to assign your inputs to an output channel and then the output channel lets you govern the high, the low, and the direction. You can also add things like curve and change how the subtrim behaves and add subtrim, but those are topics for another day. Just want to keep this one simple. So the information flow, one last time, starts with your thumb, goes through an input stick, the input feeds it to a mixer, the mixer sends it to the output and then to the radio. There are modifiers, flight modes, curves, logical switches, functions. Those are all modifiers. The primary flow of information occurs from inputs to mixes to outputs. And by the way, you don't need all this other stuff. That's the other thing that gets people wrapped around the axle, I think, is they look at flight modes and curves and switches and functions and they say, what the heck is going on? You don't need to worry about all that stuff. When you're new and just trying to get a basic model up and running, all you've got to do is basic input, mix, and output setup. That's it. All right, guys, a full 70% of my viewers are not subscribers. So if you're one of those people that keeps coming back for this information, hit the subscribe button and join the channel. It helps my channel videos get placement on YouTube, and it'll help the channel grow. So if you like this kind of content, you keep coming back for more, why don't you hit the subscribe button? Come on, join the channel. <laughs> we need you. If you are a subscriber, you know I've said this a hundred times, I appreciate everything you do to engage on the channel and keep it interesting and support each other and share information. It's all been a fantastic experience, so I appreciate all of you. Thanks for being part of the channel. And for all of you new folks, we've had a pretty good run of new subscribers lately. I just want to welcome you to RC Video Reviews. I hope you're finding the information entertaining and, and informative. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy. Okay, so let's see how that manifests itself in the mixer or in the sim. Let's, okay.